What's up guys, in today's video we are going to be making a collection system for our horror game inside of Roblox Studio. I'm super excited to record this video because I know you're going to learn a lot and I'm going to have a ton of fun making this, so let's get right to work. The first thing that I want to go ahead and do is let's start off by creating our little collection GY. Now when I say something about collecting, I'm talking about how in those story games or whatever you have to go find like five or six logs or whatever and then it'll move on to the next part of your script. Well, we're going to be creating that pretty much. So let's go over to starter GUI right here. And we can honestly just open up our objective GUI and copy our objective text. So I'm going to press Control and D to duplicate our objective text text label. And this will create a brand new one for us. Now, we need to rename this one over to collection text instead, because not our objective text. And frankly, we can just move this up a little bit above here and then we can shrink it down. So it's not so big. Then we can simply say something like logs found, well, logs found colon, and this will be like zero out of five or so. All right, so we have five logs that we need to find in according to this text label. And we have this named collection text. You can customize this however you would like to, but I think it looks pretty good like that. We don't need to change any of the properties. Let's go over to replicated storage and open up the remotes folder. And frankly, let's go ahead and duplicate our death message for remote event right here. And let's go ahead and rename this one to collect object with a capital C and a capital O. From there, let's go back to our objective GUI and open up this local script right here. And we're just going to create a brand new function. So we're going to say replicated storage dot remotes dot collect object dot on client event. We're going to connect a function to this and this will take the value that we're going to pass to it later on when we create our server script. Then we simply say script dot parent dot collection text dot text will be equal to let's say logs found. Now I'm using logs as an example, but you can do whatever you'd like to. If you're wanting to collect sticks, if you're wanting to collect rocks, if you're wanting to collect, I don't know, maybe something morbidly horrific like body parts, you could do that too. I wouldn't recommend that though, because that's a little horror-y and very demonic, I think, but you can do whatever you'd like to since it's your game. So we're going to do logs found space dot dot. Now we're going to concatenate our value with that string right there. I'm gonna do dot dot as well with a slash right here. And then we're gonna do dot dot. And this will be however many of the max value that we want to collect. So for me, this is gonna be five for our logs found right here. And now that I think about it, let's actually go ahead and create a value and a max value instead. So we're gonna do max value. That way we can just pass the value and the max value over through our server script. And this will work perfectly fine. And in case you're going to use this multiple times, now I'm thinking about it, let's just add another one for our object that we want to find. So now we have our object, our value, and our max value parameter that we're trying to do. And then right over here, we can replace the logs in this quotation mark just by doing object dot dot found just like this. So it's going to have our object that we want to find. In this case, it's going to be logs. It's going to say logs found dot dot value, which will be the value of how many logs we've collected. So in this case, it's going to be zero, but we will up that as time goes. It's going to put a little slash right here. So that way it will say zero out of whatever the max value is. And this is going to be something like five or six or whatever. And that's pretty much all we need to do. This is simply going to update our text whenever we want to go ahead and collect an object on the client. So that will just change the logs found text right here. So that's everything we need to do for this local script, for the collection text, and for our collect object remote inside of replicated storage. Let's go ahead and close off replicated storage, close off our objective GUI and our starter GUI, and let's go into server script service. Inside of here, let's click on the plus icon and we're going to insert a brand new script. This script, let's go ahead and rename to collect objects, just like this. And inside of here, let's go ahead and add in a integer value. Now, in case you didn't know, there's an integer value and then there is a number value. So a number value is something that can be a decimal point or what we call a float inside of Roblox Studio. So a float or a number with a decimal point is something like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, all the way up to like 1.2, 1.3, you know, it just any number with a decimal point. However, an integer and an integer value is simply a whole number, which means it's only one, two, three, four, and five, and etc. Integer value can not go into decimal points. A number value can go into decimal points. So for this, since we're not going to be finding like 0.5 logs, it's better to use an integer value. However, if you're 
putting, I don't know, maybe half of a log in there, you could do 0 0.5 logs found, whatever. I'm personally going to be using an integer value though, and we're going to rename this one to objects found. The value can stay at zero for now, and let's start off here at the top of our script. I personally like to create comments to kind of separate off the different parts of the code inside of my script. I think it personally makes it so much more readable and easy to understand, so I like to use comments to kind of separate off the code, like I just said. And we're going to start off here with our services first off. Now services, you'll notice all these different things inside of the Explorer. These ones are each individual services and there are also other ones that we call scripting services that are in only inside of scripts that I could talk on and on about, but really I'll just show you what I'm talking about inside of this script. So let's start off by getting replicated storage. And this is going to be equal to game colon get service quotation marks, replicated storage. Now replicated storage is simply this service that we see inside of Explorer and it holds our remotes folder and all the different remote events inside of that remotes folder. And replicated storage, you can sort of think of it like a locked container or more of like a storage area. I'm getting those mixed up. It's actually like a storage container, not a locked container or just a storage area. It's a storage container pretty much that we can hold all sorts of things in there. And since it's not the workspace, that means it won't be visible to the player at all. It's simply a storage container, if you think about it like that. We're also going to go ahead and get something called collection service. Collection service is a way for us to pretty much access plenty of items inside of our game through one single script instead of having to have multiple scripts inside of multiple different parts. So we're going to say game get service collection service, just like this. And these are the two services that we're going to need. So let's go down and create another comment for our other variables outside of services. However, before we continue on here, let's go ahead and set up our collection service. So let's go off of our script real quick. And here's where we need to go ahead and actually create the objects we want to find. So for me, I don't have a log mesh on me at the moment, so I'm just going to be using a part. However, you can create any sort of mesh that you'd like for your log or whatever other object you're trying to find. This is going to be my quote unquote log. However, you can change this as I just said. So it doesn't really matter what we name this because we're going to be using collection service, which I'll show you how that works in a second. But inside of this, let's just insert a proximity prompt. Now you'll notice that if I press play on this drop down menu and click on play here, then that proximity prompt inside of this part will allow me to interact with this part. This is what we're going to go ahead and use in order to make sure that we can actually collect our object. Now this proximity prompt, I will change the hold duration to one, so that we have to hold E for one second in order to actually interact with this proximity prompt, which you'll see right here. And notice I have to actually hold it for a second in order to interact with it. So that's all we need to do for our part. However, now we need to go over to this view tab right up here, and then we're gonna go over to something called the tag editor. So let's click on the tag editor, and we're gonna click on this new tag button. Let me drag this out real quick, so new tag, and we're going to give this a name of collectible object, just like this. And you'll notice whenever we create this tag, we actually need to set the tag to this part. And how we actually set the tag is we make sure that we have the part selected and then click on this little checkbox right here, and that will add the part to it. And you can test this by clicking on another part. You'll notice that that check mark is no longer there. But if you go back to your part that you did click on the check mark with, it will have the check mark. So now this is tagged with the collectible object tag which means that we can go ahead and close off this tag editor now and we can duplicate these parts all around wherever we would like them to be so i'm just going to have them all around this campfire for the moment you can put them wherever you would like to however this is fine for me and all of these since we just duplicated them all they all have the collectible object tag inside of them and we can select all these parts right click and press group as a folder and then we can just rename all these different parts to objects or collectible objects or whatever you want to name them. This will just make it nice and organized inside of our workspace. Now let's go back to our collect object script right here. And underneath our variables, we're going to say local tag will be equal to, and this will be quotation marks and the name of our tag. So we're going to say collectible object. Now let's get down to the fun part where we have our functions right here. And we're going to create a for loop. So we're going to loop through every single thing that has the collectible object tag inside of collection service. So we're going to say for underscore comma, and this will be our object in pairs, 
and this will be collection service colon get tagged and this will be our tag that we are looking for then we're going to do this. So once we added the collectible object tag to all of these parts right here, they are added to collection service underneath the tag collectible object. So since they're now inside of collection service, we can loop through everything inside of collection service under the tag our collectible object tag, and that will make us sure that we can actually loop through all the parts that we want to. And since we're looping through all these parts, we can do all the code from here and not have to put a script in each individual part, which is pretty nice. So now let's just check if our object is a base part or our object is a mesh part, just in case something that we don't want, like, I don't know, maybe our proximity prompt got added to the tag or something else that we didn't want get added to the tag. We just want to make sure that it's actually an instance like a base part or a mesh part before we go ahead and do anything else. So if it's a base part or it's a mesh part, then we're, we can go ahead and continue with our script. And we're gonna say object.proximity, oh, that's not how you spell it. Proximity prompt.triggered, and we're going to connect a function. And the triggered event on a proximity prompt will allow us to take the parameter of player, and the player is the player that actually went ahead and triggered our proximity prompt inside of that object. So we're going to say object.proximityprompt.triggered. We're connecting a function with the player as the parameter. And now we can simply say object destroy. So we're going to get rid of the log or the object that you are trying to collect. We're also going to say script dot objects found dot value will plus equal one and then let's go ahead and say replicated storage dot remotes dot collect object we're going to fire all clients in the games so that way every single player will update the amount of logs found and then we need to pass our three different values so let's start off with a string right here this is going to be whatever we want to actually collect in this case it's going to be logs so we'll do logs then we put a comma after that string value and we'll do our script dot objects found dot value as the value that we want to pass through and then the maximum value is going to be the value of the maximum amount of logs we want to find for me i have five logs inside of here so we can actually say script oh not script game dot workspace dot objects get children oops i accidentally pressed the wrong key there and at the front here we're going to put a hashtag which will just return the number of objects inside the objects folder which in this case is going to be five. So we'll just return that many objects right here and that'll be the max value. Otherwise, if you want to, you can just say five right here or however many objects you have. Either way will work perfectly fine. Anyways, let's go ahead and say script dot, dot objects found dot changed. And we're going to connect a function. And then we're going to check if script dot objects found dot value is equal equal to something like five, which is our max amount of objects we want to go ahead and collect. Then we're going to go ahead and here's where we can print all items found. And this is what I'm going to do just to kind of tell that all of our items have been found. However, you can do something else. Like if you want to delete a door inside of the workspace that will allow the player to move into a new area, you can do that, for example. If you want to teleport all the players inside of your game, you can do that. I want to leave this very open to you guys to do whatever you would like here because, frankly, that's what makes all horror games unique. But for now, we're just going to leave it at this print statement. So, let's go ahead, and I believe this is everything that we actually need to do. So, let's click on play here, and we can test it out. So, you'll notice logs found, 0 out of 5. Let's go ahead and interact with this log. When we interact with it, the log is now gone. It says logs found one out of five. Let's go ahead and collect all of them. You can see each time is actually updating this value right here. And bada bing, bada boom. So we have all five logs found and it will say all items found inside of our output. So from here, I would recommend changing the objective by firing that one remote event set objective. You can change it to like escape or something. You could disable the logs found text so that way you can't see it anymore. You can do so many things with this script, and I hope you have plenty of ideas with that. I also hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day, and I want to thank you for spending the time to watch this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot from it, and I hope you had an amazing time. Anyways, all I'm Rusty Silly Band, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. See ya!